Hey folks. Um, very unprofessional man, right? Chewing gum. <laughs> uh, why I am uh, I better just starting this video. Just uh, give me a second. Um, give me a second. You know, I I I I try to I try to I try to try to live by punctuality. You know, it's very very important. Uh, I try to live by punctuality. Now you might let, hear a little bit of noise. That's upstairs. Mr. Costa is doing his. Um, Mr. Costa is doing his uh, his session. Um, Henry is doing his session, so you will hear a little bit of noise uh, out there from upstairs. So I hope you all are doing good. Uh, when you see me do this, it's because I'm uh, when my face is down. It's not I'm, I'm not being dis disrespectful. I'm just trying to share the video uh, in one or two places across social group and a few other groups. That's what I'm trying to do. So at the beginning of every video, you see me do this. It's not uh, me being disrespectful. Leon, he said, you want me to play some music? Why? Leon, why? Why? We got the point get the island, bro. Leon, you bad boy. <laughs> Leon, Meza. Leon said, you want me to play some music so I can bring the people data? Yeah. Leon, you know, we got we to gotta, we gotta be considering for our people now. Uh, we, we, we have to be very considerate. You know, we can get mad with them. We'll see what we'll see. By the end of the day, they're our people. They are the ones who fight for. Some, sometimes you, you see us throwing tantrums, getting mad at them, is because we're trying to get them to stand up, to wake them up, you know? That's what we're trying to do. Trying to get them to wake up and, and to fight for themselves. But of course, people need leadership uh, all over the world. Don't fool yourself. I'm a student of history and I say this uh, with authority. Uh, every great movement around the world has had a great leader or leaders who inspire them. And, and, and so that is what people need. People, people aren't able to just stand up by themselves to do things. They, they need to have people to lead them. And once you are able to inspire them, and, and they, will, they, will, they will wake up and they will follow you into action and you all together will make history. Now, y'all got to go pay your dues. The due business, y'all got to address this issue of the dues. Um, uh, I'm not impressed with you. You know, we got the mobile money number now for Liberia. The number is uh, uh, zero triple five. Let me call the number zero triple five nine nine five five four four. And the name uh, on that number, that number is registered under the name Council of Patriots. That's the mobile money number for like for Liberia. You can go there and, and you can set up and you can you can start paying your dues. It's very important. We need to pay our dues. Uh, you cannot expect us to. I'm a help of Peter with me. No, we ain't got nothing to do with data being in UA America. You don't want to tease people. Want me more good to put you in like bro. Leah, I'll be with it. I'll go down for you. But we're not winning the battle on the data thing. Not the government. The, the government walking the back. That's part of the reason why I'm doing this video. So that's the mobile money number zero triple five nine nine five five four four. That's zero triple five nine nine five five four four. Very simple number zero triple five nine nine five five four four. Zero triple five nine nine five five four four nine nine five five four four. That's the mobile money number. For those of you in America, you have to go and use the um. You you have to go on online. Go to the website. It's very very simple. You can sign up and you pay your dues. It's very important. If we have a thousand or two thousand people uh, paying their dues on their website, uh, it's going to be great. Uh, Brother Aaron Nella, who manages the website for us, uh, Aaron set it up in a way when you go to YouTube, the YouTube channel, because we have the Costa Show channel on YouTube. Uh, we post a show there every day. So you can go there and we have the website. The link to the site is on the YouTube channels right there. Uh, those of you who follow, we got almost 10,000 people following the YouTube channel. So you can click there, click on the link. It will take you directly to where you need to sign up and begin to pay your dues. 
If you have any trouble, you need any help, Aaron Nella, his phone number is there. You can get in touch with Aaron. Aaron will help you out so that you can pay your dues. People ain't let you have money, but when you get when you when you when you start telling them about raising money on that, they want they want you to want that. You know, by the end of the day, you can't do anything without money. You need money to do it. Uh, you know, the press going we have today, you're not free, the mobile app, all those things, and I have the media people there. That ain't no free. The money, it takes money to do that. You know, and, and you can't fight without money. You need money to fight. All right, so um, I want to thank all of you, our people, our supporters, our, you believe in this cause, you believe in what we're doing, uh, you believe in something greater than yourself, you believe in something greater than some political party or some political leader. It's very, very important. Country first. The country first is very, very important. I want to thank the... The secretary general, you ain't gonna make me talk fast here because you ain't got data, you know. <laughs> they did that here. Yeah. You're not gonna be rushing me to be talking fast, fast because you're like, I beg you, man. I, I just see people that I mean, I don't did out. I don't did out. They're not, they're not jobu to here. We're not cutting jobu here. They're not quiggy. Eh, hey, hey, my people are big young man. We're not doing quiggy. <laughs> So thank you, y'all. Y'all let me take my time. So I, I, I got to build a thing. I got to build it. It has to be a build up, and then of course, then I do, dump it. Look. So I want to. I, I want to say this. I want to thank our Secretary General, Mr. Moba Yobo, uh, for beautiful, beautiful um, presentation today. As usual, uh, he was fantastic. He was on point. It was great. Uh, uh, and, and the message was well delivered. I want to thank our our people who were there and Mr. Jetro Kolev for coordinating the press conference. I want to thank uh, the youth wing chair, the acting chair, you know, Samira uh, Yima. I want to thank her. I want to thank the youth wing members. I want to thank other members of the COP who were present at the press conference. And it was fantastic. I was very, very impressed. I want to also thank, um, uh, I, I want to thank Senator Darius DeLong, our senator. He was present. He was in the House. And by the way, on Saturday, they're having a dollar rally for Senator Darius DeLong at the headquarters of the Unity Party. You want to go there. You want to go contribute a little money. Uh, I will get the... Somebody sent me the mobile money number for the Darius DeLong. The one dollar for DeLong. I think they call it dollar for DeLong rally. Dollar for DeLong. Dollar, do, dollar for DeLong. Somebody send me those numbers so I can put them out, out here. Y'all got to contribute to Darius DeLong. Y'all say the man might not take money from government. He might not take a bribe from Joe. We have to do bad deeds in the Senate, right? So that means, uh, and then the man called it pay. So that means the man the man ain't got, the man ain't got money for him to be able to operate, to run campaign, all that kind of stuff. You, you got to help him. So that's where you come in. The dollar, the, 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 the dollar, the, it's a mobile money number. So you can be in America, you can send away money. That's the beauty. These are mobile money numbers. You have the orange, uh, the, the, the orange money and the mobile money. But you know, uh, so I can promote the orange, uh, I mean, the, the mobile money because, of course, you, you can use SendWave to send the money to contribute to, uh, his campaign. By the way, the comments expressed here, the comments I express whenever you hear me talk about SendWave is totally apolitical. They are neutral. They have nothing to do with whatever political comments or political discussions I have. So they're completely divorced. They're not one and the same. They are distinct, separate institutions. And my political thing and the SendWave thing, uh, SendWave is neutral, period. I want to make that very, very clear. My views expressed here uh, do not represent what they stand for. Uh, they're just a business trying to create a platform for Liberians to use. Uh, so I will provide the numbers. If somebody sends me those numbers, you need to support Darius DeLong uh, so that he can do good in the thing. We need to do that fund, fund raise. I keep telling you, the way to raise funds is not for one man spending plenty of money. Yeah, we need one man to spend plenty of money. Somebody just sent me the number. Thank you, my dear, my dear brother. Uh, these are the numbers. Listen to the numbers. I'm going to call the numbers out. Somebody can please write them down. Put it, just write it under the po under the live feed and I will pin the numbers so that people can get them. Uh, it's called D for D, D uh, Dollar for DeLong. Dollar for DeLong. They're going to have it on Saturday at the Unity Party headquarters. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Uh, Brother Cyrus uh, uh, Sigbe and Brother Patrick Horner, Brother Mo Ali, our Secretary General, uh, 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 Mo Yoko is going to be there. And, and, and several other people are involved with this effort. So as I often say, the way to raise money, enough for one man to get plenty of money. If you get a full fine, it's for a lot of people, a greater volume of givers to give a 
as much as they can afford to give. So let's say, for example, let's say all the people who can say y'all enjoy the law, y'all enjoy the law, or y'all enjoy the COP, y'all enjoy the COP. For example, give father, father, if 1,000 people or, or 2,000 people in America say they're sending father, father, father to these mobile money number using send wave or sending it however other way, do you know how much money that that is? A lot of money. It's a lot of money, but so now y'all can get tall. Y'all can get tall. Y'all can get tall. Oh well, man, y'all let me know where y'all did that bin or you get two mega, mega by <laughs> All right, so the Dillon, the dollar for Dillon mobile money numbers. These are the numbers, the mobile money and the orange money. The mobile money is zero triple five. That's zero five 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 zero zero two zero zero three. Let me repeat. The mobile money is zero triple five zero zero two zero zero three. That's zero triple five zero zero two zero zero three. The orange money number is zero triple seven zero zero two zero zero three. It's the same number, just change it, you know, orange and yeah. so it's zero triple five zero zero two zero zero three. And the other one is the orange one is zero triple seven zero zero two zero zero three. Those are the numbers. And when you send money there, that money goes directly to the Dara Zealand campaign. And people need to begin to finance to fund their candidates. You believe in a candidate, you have the fund, you have to finance their campaign. That's the way it works in America. That's the way it works in most parts of the world. Now, um, I'm not I'm not going to be here long, but I just thought to do this video because a lot of interesting things have happened. First of all, I want to thank the United States Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Uh, thank you very much. Somebody just pinned the numbers here. So I'm going to, I mean, somebody just posted, I'm going to pin these numbers. These are the numbers here that I pinned right underneath the podcast here at the bottom of the page. Uh, dollar, D for Delon. That means dollar for Delon. There you can, you can send money to Delon to help with his campaign. That's very, very good. Please do that. Send some money. You're plenty! Damn it, man! You're plenty! I'm asking for some five dollar, some ten dollar, some five dollar. You know, this is how you support these things. We don't, we, we don't, we, we don't know how to support something that we believe in. It's sad. We expect you expect us to break our backs for y'all, but to, 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 for you to just get dollar, two dollar, three dollar, ten dollar, the hard way. You can buy beer, you can buy this, you can do the one. You say you care about something, but you can't put money there, man. I say, put your mouth, put your money where your mouth is. You have to do that. Y'all give, y'all give Delon some money. Y'all give the COP some money. This is what you do. You say, Delon, McCoy, salary. Then you say, the man, when I take money from Joe, yeah. Then the man running campaign. Where the hell do you think the money will come from? It will come from the sky? When, you remember when Delon declared, after the man said, he had three cents in your account. Three cents. <laughs> <laughs> you are, yeah, you are, man. The man had three cents. So the man, obviously, he ain't got no money sitting out nowhere. He ain't got no money sitting out nowhere because the man said, yeah, only three cents in your bank account. You know? And then, of course, the salary ain't that much because the man got it paid. So y'all go get the man some money. All right. So today, October the 8th, a very interesting day for life, for life, for Liberia. The United States Secretary, Secretary, Secretary of State, Michael Pompeo, issued a statement press release that press release is very short i'm going to read it and it's it's very very interesting and i'm very very i'm very happy about it of course there are no elections will be happening in liberia it was as if michael pompeo was speaking to us so this press release is on the website of the uh, state department the state department web website is there you can go there you can read it and no, nobody has to tell you about it it's already there now the the um the title of this press release is Upcoming Elections in Africa. Of course, upcoming elections. We're having elections in, in December. We're having presidential general elections in 2023. So Pompeo, a Secretary, Secretary of State, he already knows this. So this is what Pompeo, what they posted on the embassy's, uh, on the um, State Department's website. Upcoming Elections in Africa, that's the title. Uh, Michael R. Pompeo, Secretary of State, October 8, 2020. The United States is committed to supporting free, fair, inclusive elections. Hello? Free, fair, inclusive elections. That's what America is, is committed to supporting. 
The conduct of elections is important not only for Africans, but also for defenders of democracy around the world. We believe all sides should participate peacefully in the democratic process. Repression and intimidation have no place, have no place in democracies. Repression, intimidation, no place, according to Pompeo. He goes further. The right to peaceful assembly. Hello, you tell George Weah. Michael Pompeo, the Secretary of State is speaking to him. Pom Pompeo says, the right to peaceful assembly and freedom of expression and association are at the heart of a functioning democracy. Pompeo says, in order for a democracy to function, the right to peaceful assembly and the right to people expressing themselves, the right to peaceful assembly and, ex and freedom of expression and association are at the heart of a functioning democracy. Y'all go tell George we are that. Michael Pompeo is sending him a message. Allow people to peaceably assemble. Allow people to freely move about and associate and be a part of whatever organization they choose to be a part of. Let me read further. Adherence to these democratic norms and to the rule of law allows all citizens to engage in political dialogue and support their choice of candidates, parties, and platforms. We will watch closely. This is Michael Pompeo. Pompeo is saying, we will watch closely the actions of individuals who interfere in the democratic process and will not hesitate to consider consequences. Michael Pompeo said today, of all days, October the 8th, that we are watching y'all in Africa. You who are organizing elections, we are watching y'all in Africa. Hmm? That's what Michael Pompeo is saying. And that we are watching what you do, the way you conduct these elections, the way you treat your people when they want to assemble and pro protest. There will be consequences. Pompeo goes further, he said, including visa restrictions. Hello? Michael Pompeo said there will be consequences when George Weah when they organize elections and they try to rape the election and they try to use the police to beat people up, Michael Pompeo said there will be consequences. What did he say? We will closely, we will closely watch, closely watch the actions of individuals who interfere with the democratic process. You're hearing it? Now let me say it. This is the Secretary of State of the United States of America. He is saying that they are watching African countries. They are watching George Weah very closely. If you tamper with elections, look at the other CDs in here. They are the stupid dog. Sorry, I gotta call him dog. You know, you know. Eh, 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 the, eh, I'm reading from the from 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 the website of the of the State Department, and yet a CDC comes here and says it is a lie. I'm reading from the Department of State's website. Yet a sedition says it is a lie. How can you call that kind of person? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but I mean, it, it, does that person have brain? Michael Pompeo says they're watching George Weah. I'm not talking about other countries. I'm talking about my country. They're watching George Weah. And closely. And he said, they will not hesitate to consider consequences. America say, we're not with you. If you try to cheat election, then you put people on the street to try to make trouble. We will take action. We will take action. Those actions will include visa restrictions. You will not get visa to come to America. America will not do business with you. They will blacklist you. Nobody who does business with America will be comfortable to do business with you because you'll be blacklisted by Uncle Sam. This is Michael Pompeo. He said this today. So George Weah, yeah, you, you better be damn careful. Begin. You know you got properties here. Your wife is an American and all, the, all these things. You don't want trouble. Henry, please go upstairs, buddy. Please. You don't want trouble from Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam said, they will put visa restrictions. They will take other actions and a lot of other things that they will do. Pompeo goes further. 
Now, let me read it. He said, we will watch closely the actions of individuals who interfere in the democratic process and will not hesitate to consider consequences, including visa restrictions for those responsible for election-related violence. Hello? What did Pompeo say? This is Michael Pompeo, Secretary of State of the United States. He said, for those responsible for, for violence, for election-related violence, you organize elections, you cheat us, we want to protest, then you come, you beat us, or you shoot us, Pompeo said, you're screwed. John, are you listening? Michael Pompeo said, people want to protest, we're coming to protest no November 16th, you try to attack us, Pompeo says he will put visa restrictions on you and your people. He said when the elections are held and you try to cheat and you beat people, you try to beat people to try to make them cut all, Pompeo said he will take action against you. Pompeo goes further. As long-time partners to the nations of Africa, we care about the region's democratic trajectory and are committed to working constructively with international and regional partners. Fellow Liberians, the Secretary of State of the United States, the most senior U.S. cabinet official, stated today that the elections that are happening on the continent, they are watching these elections. The elections in December, they are watching. If you try to stop us from peaceably assembling, he said they are watching. Visa restrictions. Musa Dean, all that nonsense you be doing, trying to deny us from gathering and all that kind of stuff, the Americans say they are watching you. They are watching you. To Jefferson Koji, be sending talks out to big people. The Americans are watching you. They are collecting data. The embassy is working. They are reporting back to their people. The U.S. Embassy near Monrovia also shared this press release on their website. I see some people just posted a link here. The U.S. Embassy shared this press release on their website today that the United States government will take action against Liberian government officials. The police director, Patrick Sudu, be very careful. George Weah sends you to beat people up. Be very careful, my man. The Americans will put you on a blacklist. My man, you'll be screwed. You don't want the Americans to put you on a blacklist. You all need to be very, very careful. The military part, forget it. You know they're not going to do anything stupid. They take their orders. Their marching orders come from Washington, from the Pentagon. So, fellow Liberians, the Americans are on our side, on the people's side. November 16th, we begin our peaceful protest. We listed 10 things in our press statement today. One of those things is what the government seems to be walking back on now because they're scared is the 100% increase in data, the price of data. You want to deny people access to information. You want to deny people access to, 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 to communication as a way of, you want to stifle free expression, free speech. Pompeo says, these are the rights of the people. This is what Michael Pompeo said, the Secretary of State. So y'all go sit down there, y'all go send police to go beat people up. The Americans are watching. They're closely watching. And so they issued a statement today. And I want to say this. Minutes after, about 20 minutes or so, after our press release, our press conference today, the, LR, the LTA issued a press release. I'm going to read the press release for you. They put out a press release a few You know, the government is so stupid. The last thing you want to do is to wait until, say, the COP does what they did today and then to react in that manner because you are afraid. Don't wait until that happens for you to... You, you should not put yourself in a position of weakness as a government where you have to walk back your action. It makes you look very, very bad. That is not how a government should operate. You should not do that. That's, that's what it did, essentially, today. They waited... They were messing around. They thought we we're going to sit back and allow this. We are going ahead with the protest. We had 10, we had 10 issues. Our press releases out, out there. Finally, I read it. We have 10 issues. 
the, the, the issue of data and voice calls, the hike in the fees or the data rate and the voice and the voice rate is just one of the 10 items. If they can do the other nine items, we will not do the protest. Do the other nine. You don't do it. November 16th, we begin a nationwide protest. Michael Pompeo will be watching. The Americans know that we will be protesting. They will be watching. Go beat people there. Miguel, send your murderers. Miguel, you're killing all these people in town. You and your man here. Bill Tower there, Samuel Twain. Send your murderers on the day of the protest to go and murder people. And you will see what they do. They will pick you up. You will not even believe it. You guys should go and do these things. Yeah. And to, to you, the police and state security actors, be very careful how you take instructions from these politicians because they will betray you when the shit hits the fan. They will say they didn't authorize you to do it. You need to be very, very careful. So today, a few minutes after the COP had their press conference, very widely attended the uh, attended press conference, the LTA issued this statement. You all, many of you have seen it. Essentially, I'm not going to read the whole thing yet. Es es essentially, the LTA is acting shocked that they don't know why the phone companies, the mobile operators, are doing this. They don't know. They do know. They issued their order. They went to court. Orange took them to court. They fought with Orange in the courts. They went to the Supreme Court level. They won. The Supreme Court ruled in their favor. The Supreme Court ruled in their favor to mandate the phone companies to increase the price of data and the price of voice. They won. After they won, the phone companies issue a statement that we will go ahead. We will go ahead and do what the government wants us to do. That's what happened. And they, they, they announced it. We were expecting this to happen. And then finally, it took effect 12 midnight, October the 8th. After it took effect, now, the government didn't do anything right away. Do you know as yet, the government has not even, the LTA has not even communicated with the phone com companies to tell them, to ask them why they did this, which is what they should have done if they didn't know about it, if it was not to their, to their, to their taste. They did not do it. Instead, they issued this press release because they are afraid of the COP and the action that we have threatened. And we're still going to go out with the action. We want 10 things, you give us one. So we got nine to go. They issued this statement without communicating with the phone companies to say, why did you do this? Essentially, they gave the phone company 12 hours, an ultimatum of 12 hours to withdraw, to rescind, to rescind, to cancel the new data and voice prices. Didn't you go to the Supreme Court with these people? Fighting these people? Didn't you indefinitely suspend Ivan Brown, the LTA boss, because he spoke to Henry Costa? And you and you said, why you had to speak with me telling me that this whole data thing was not going to happen and the increase and all of that? Isn't that why you suspended him? Did you not win the case in the Supreme Court? Supreme Court said... The LTA is on a mandate. I mean, the LTA has authority to order hikes in data and voice prices and that it is not a tax, but it is a surcharge. And so you, the, the legislature does not have to be the one to do it. The LTA has the power to levy surcharges. You win. You won the case. In 2019, the LTA issued an order. I have the order here. It ordered the companies to increase the rates according to what they company, the exact same rates that they ordered the companies to, to increase the rates to. That's exactly how, that's what the companies have done. Nothing else. The companies have done exactly what the LTA ordered them to do. In 2019, February 2019, the LTA ordered Lone Star and Orange to increase I have the order here. February of last year. Hold on. I'm going to show you something here quick. This is what they did. And now they're acting like, we don't know. This is what they did. Let me let me read for you. On a sixth monthly anniversary of this order, being October 15, 2019, 
they shall be automatically in, automatically imposed a surcharge on mobile data in the amount of US 0 0.0065 for each megabyte of data. Each megabyte of data. They got to put the surcharge on each megabyte of data. Not even the whole bundle. Just one MB. They put they place the thing. Then they went on to voice. What's the one they place on voice? This is their order. Let me read for you. This is their order. The order here is dated February the 25th, 2019. Establishing price flows for on net voice and data services and the regulatory fee on telecommunications goods and services. This is it. February 25, 2000 and, 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 uh, 2019. This is what they did. They told the companies, you are going to increase this. So what happened? Then they told them, on the six monthly anniversary of this order, being October 5th, 15, 2019, there shall be automatically imposed a surcharge on all net voice. This is for voice calls. In the amount of US 0 0.008 cents for each minute of call. You see? Now compare what is in this LTA order of February 25, 2019 to what the companies have done. Exactly the amount that they were ordered to do. Who all signed this document? Folks, the order document. Signed by Edwina Crum Zappa, com Commissioner LTA, who's now the acting chairperson. Signed by D. Zota on Titus, Commissioner. Ezra A. Akinzai, the other damn criminal. Commissioner Mariah G. Harris Harrison, who is the sister of Len Eugene Nangwe. I'm told her his biological sister. So listen, folks. And then, uh, then the chairperson, Ivan G. Brown, chairman. Folks, hold on. Turn the camera the other other way. Do you read the order, folks? Paul, my begin Lawrence, she published this document. Photo credit to him, unlike other people. Not that I don't have it, but this is the one I can find handy right away. So you see, that they signed the order. You, you are looking at the document. This is the order that they signed. You see, you see the date? February 25, 2019. They issued this order that they will increase voice. This is the date of the order. You see the date? Fellow librarian, do you see the date? February 25, 2019, since last year. They ordered these people to increase this thing. Since last year. Then today, they said they are shocked. They said, we're too shocked. How the company then break like this? How the company then go increase it? Look at what they put in the order. How much they told the people to charge? It's all written there. It's all written there in black and white. So they told the people to increase it. This is what made Orange to go to court to sue the government. This is why Orange went to court to try to stop it. And Orange lost the case at the level of the Supreme Court. A few weeks ago. Then the government, the, then the companies were, the companies did not set the rate. The companies are stupid are Carol's Gray with opium smoking, more talking nonsense on face, Facebook. The GSM companies did not set the rate. They did not determine what to increase the uh, per one minute to or what to increase uh, one megabyte of data to. No, they did not determine the increase. It was the government that decided the in increase. And they stipulated the increase in the order. You just saw the document for your own selves. Today, the government said, huh? Win, 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 no. They don't say the company is doing. Look at the kind of thing they, they wrote to the companies. Threatening the companies. They swear they say they don't know anything at all. They say they don't know the companies did this on their own. And they are mad with the company. Are you freaking kidding me? These people are saying... That they don't know anything. Look what they say here. They say, boy, these boys, these boys are brave. They say, in their press release, they put out today after the COP spoke and called for the protest, nationwide protest. They said the new term of services 
which has been implemented by the MNO, this is the mobile network operators, that's the phone companies, that's how they call them, now is far in excess of what is required for implementation of any other design for profiteering and political purpose purposes. Are you listening? They are now accusing the phone companies of engaging in political business. They say the phone companies are in position or opposition. You, you, listen to what they said. They said the rate. Talk to the boys and lie. The boys will publish document and turn around and say, we know that document you published, that, we, that, that you presented to us. They publish a document and they turn around and they say, they don't know it. Now they say, yeah, the new term of services, that means the new rates, that the new fees, or what they call term of services. The new term of services, which is being implemented by the MNOs, as the mobile network operators, MNOs, now is far in excess of what is required for implementation of any order and design for profiteering and political purposes. So they look at Orange, they say Orange is the opposition. When somebody accuses you of doing something for political purposes, what, what does that mean? They mean that you hate them. They mean they, what, what they mean is that you are in opposition to them. So they tell the companies that the companies are engaged in op opposition politics. Opposition politics? The LTA say, we are say the companies are hate position. They hate the government. The companies hate the government. You told the people in February 2019 that you will increase data by this amount. You will increase voice by this amount. Then you turn around. Blocking this edition. It's too sweet to block them. So, so sweet. Very good. I just block another one. Then you turn around. And then you tell the company, you tell the companies that you did not tell them to do this. Then say, the MNOs, the mobile network operators, are here by giving 12 hours to receive this illegal, illegal price increase or face appropriate punitive actions. What? Is it legal now? If it's illegal now, what you told them to do as far back as February 2019 is now illegal. Because of the political backlash, because the COP had a press conference today and called for a nationwide protest. And one of the propositions for which we are protesting is the wicked, the wicked, this is wicked, there's no other way to put it, this wicked increase in data and voice price or prices. So now you say the companies are engaged in political posturing, opposition politics. Orange is owned by the French government. So Orange. One of the countries where George Weah played football is now an opposition to George Weah. Orange. MTN, majority shareholder in Lone Star Cell MTN, is based in South Africa. The largest mobile operator on the continent. So MTN now is opposition to George Weah. Everybody that opposition now. You see how you're stupid? So everybody hates George Weah now. The phone companies hate George Weah. Huh? This is absolute madness. But I want to say this. Prepare yourselves, folks. November 16, Monday, November 16, we begin our protest. Michael Pompeo, the Secretary of State, has already said it. They're going to be watching the government. They're going to be watching how they treat people. And guess what? They will place sanctions on people. That's what they will do. Sanctions will be imposed. Visa restrictions and other punitive actions will be taken. You see what they did to one blue? One blue is just, one blue is not even a mean person. They are just waiting. That's what's going to happen. So I just wanted to do this to tell you that's the great news. They, they, the Americans are watching and they made it clear. You see, it's one thing to just say, oh, the Americans are watching, but the Americans have spoken at the highest level of the State Department to say we are watching these elections that are coming, clamping down on people's rights to Peace, uh, to, to, to peacefully assemble, trying to stifle free speech, we are watching and we will take action. And they did not just say we will not hesitate to take action. They said we will take action and among the actions that we will take will be visa restrictions. Tell a librarian man, say you can never come to America. He will want to die. All the money the body can steal. Tell him, say don't come to America, they'll feel it like nothing. Because first of all, it's not just that Remember they say, you may be more, I mean, I, I, I need to go to America. That's a lie. Every Liberian man wants to come to America. 
So the Americans can do a whole number of things. They can place you on visa restrictions. They can maybe place you on sanctions. Maybe they can put you on the OFAC list. Nobody will do business with you. Anybody who does business with America is, will be prohibited from doing business with you. McGill wants to come to America. Twelve years old, Olivia used to drive a truck. He wants to come. He wants to be able to come back to America at some point. And their families want to be able to come to America. Their wives get pregnant and want to come give birth in America. So we all know how every Liberian is afraid of America. That one day we all we know that one day. So the Americans are saying, you try us, this is what we'll do to you. You try to beat your people when they come out to protest, this is what we'll do to you. You try to deny people the right of uh, organizing their own political rallies and you interrupt them, you attack people like what Koji, Koji, Koji does. The Americans are saying, this is what they will do to you. You see, Koji will always broken English. He comes to America all the time. to can't talk nonsense. Be chopping. Let me be blunt. And all that kind of nonsense. He be talking to that. America, you can't be talking all that nonsense. They want to be able to come to America. You tell that brave man, say, you can't go to America. He can see what it, that man, a, a private park and just die. You tell that brave man, say, my man, you can't go to America. Yo, that man, private park and just die in a traffic. Because he believes that America, he has to come to America. When the, the day one plus saw a knee from Michael Pompeo mouth, you know what I mean? Michael Pompeo, the Secretary of State of America said, my man, you, you're not coming to America, you're a whole family. I know one plus went to and said, you're not, you're not eating nothing yet. <laughs> Look, the day, the day one plus, one plus found out that the Secretary of State of the United States of America said, one plus, you can't come to America, your children can't come to America, your women can't come to America, you might up there now, one blue next year where Nicky Nay is at. That one on protest is striking. One blue get in Nati. I tell you, what? You make it, me and my children, they can't go to America. America. They were like, Brandman, like America. Bye, way. One blue, it's not one blue vex, they're talking. One blue, they're talking. One blue frustrated, you know, when you frustrated, you know. You got to, the comfort you get from your significant other, from your, from, from your, from, from your special lady, that comfort can help you to deal with the stress. But one blue, one blue is dealing with that stress. Then he's not getting so, he's not getting no comfort. You understand? So one blue, so it's not easy on one blue. Right now, that's what I feel it. You tell, a, 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 they don't call it man, passport guy. So passport guy is a basa name. Any male basa person. Who is involved in passport selling is called passport guy. You know they got Sunday guy, Monday guy, and Friday guy. So they don't say the man need passport guy. So the man is not based on guy Finley. The man is passport guy Finley. So right now, right now, you take person guy come to America, he will be, he will be scared because he know what Uncle say want to do him here. Because right now he's scared. My man, I go I go to that country. You take person guy say. I get one million dollar US for you. Come to America. Let me go see how you can say you can send me one passport. One, one, uh, Brazilian guy or passport guy Philip was in my busy with my campaign right now. I mean, I don't have money the last day. I tell you, because Philip doesn't know what Uncle Sam guy in the system for him. So the day our man one blue heard that day that they say, my man, Mike Pompeo say you can go to America. A woman say, you one blue, you know women and they quit to threaten you with that thing. My brother, and now all the men are talking. And you have a children here from their live video here. Only, only, only grown up people in here. They want one, one woman on strike, that fun. Huh? You can you imagine? That one place that you have fat. One place that you have no supply here. You know what? Ville, Ville, let me tell you about what? Ville, let me tell you about what? One place that you have talking about. Now you know the whole thing about it. One place hiding. So he gave a rope at 10 10. No way to find Tente. He's hiding. So when you're hiding, you can't look for Tente because you don't trust the Tente, but you trust the wife, right? Now your wife you trust. So he can't get Tente to tea in oil. So, <laughs> so he got fat. So I'm telling you something, 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 something. So right, right now, all the boys are scared. Right now, right now, even my girl said, my girl said, come to America. My girl said, I'm going to go to America. Right now, my girl never be scared to come to America. Ellis Tyler Park, yeah, for you. I'm not going to America in a long time. So, if you tell a green man, say, you can't come to America, that's smart, 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 smart thing. And America knows that. That is why America does what it does. It tells you visa restrictions. Eh? They, they, visa restrictions. They, they, they don't play fun. 
they, they don't play fun. They deny you visa, they blacklist you, they put you on a offer list. Nobody want to do business with you, my man. Don't come near me. Oh. You America, not cool. You know what I'm saying? The former vice president of Nigeria, Atiku Abu Bakar. Let me tell you about this before I end this video. Atiku. And I'll also tell you the power of lobbying. Atiku Abu Bakar was vice president on Obasanjo. That boko can steal. Ooh, that boko can steal. Atiku and his wife, you know, you know what they did? This was in the mid 2000s. It's just there, yeah, just around 2000 to 2011. Atiku Abu Bakar and his wife, they took a bribe from the German telecoms giant Siemens. Huge bribe. I think it's about 40 million dollars. So they got a big bribe money. They took it from Siemens. Siemens wanted a contract in Nigeria. And so they bribed Atiku to make the deal happen or something. They gave him several millions of dollars. Several millions of dollars. You know, you know what I bought it? That bought damn stupid. Atiku took that money here and his wife. They brought that money to America and opened a bank account here. Are you kidding me? Does that boy not know that you can't bring dirty money to this country? Atiku and his wife brought that money, that bribe money from Siemens. They brought it to America. They put it in a bank account. Y'all gonna read the story while I'm finished with the podcast. Y'all gonna lie to y'all. He was vice president of Nigeria. He brought the money here. He and his wife. They can't put the money in the bank. They said, they say, yeah, our money they on that side now. You know what happened? You know what happened to Atiku? Let me tell you what happened to Atiku. The Americans intercepted the information. The Americans launched an investigation. The U.S. Senate, they're not even the executive branch of government. The United States Senate launched a probe into Siemens. Uh, the dealings in Nigeria. The Siemens too keen to confess. And, uh, I pay you brighter and go confess. So Siemens confessed to America, to the U.S. Senate committee, that they have paid Atiku millions, millions of dollars in bribe. Atiku won't deny. Hey, hello. Uh, they give me money. Up. Americans said, oh, you want to lie? This is evidence. You know what Americans did to Atiku? A certain vice president of Africa's most populous country, Africa's largest economy with half a billion dollars? I mean, half a trillion. Half a trillion dollars. Nigeria's economy is 500 billion. That's half a trillion. You know what they did? They put Atiku and his wife on sanctions. The money that were here, they froze the damn money. They placed them on sanctions. Atiku was vice president of the most powerful country in Africa, economically and militarily, but he and his wife could not come to America. Do not play with Uncle Sam. Don't play with Uncle Sam. But well, guess what I bought then? Atiku Abu Bakar. When he decided to run against uh, Muhammadu Buhari, you know what Atiku did? Atiku went and hired the most influential lobbyist in America. They call him, uh, what's his thing? Uh, Brian Balak. Brian Balak is Trump's lobbyist. That's how they call him on K Street in Washington, D.C. You want to make things happen? Call Brian Balak. Atiku hires several lobbyists when you're running for president. Because it's embarrassing. You can't come to America, you want to run for president of Nigeria. You gotta be able to come to America. Atiku hired Brian Balak. Look up that guy. B-R-I-A-N. The last name is spelled B-A-L-L-A-R-K. Brian Balak or something like that. Balak. Atiku hired Brian Balak and two other lobbying firms. This is all public. You can read this thing in the in, in uh, the writer's news, you can read it in other well-established publications. Go read his stuff later on. He hired these people when he was running for president. He said, no, this America thing, we got to fix it. You got to be able to go to America. The money they took, you will not get it, but fix it. That boy hired Brian Balak. You know who Brian Balak is? Brian Balak used to be Trump's lobbyist when Trump was in business, when he was a businessman. Trump tried to get a casino license in Florida. And Brian Balak was the one instrumental in helping Trump secure that casino license. So they become they, they became close ever since, and he's been doing stuff for, for Trump. So when Trump was running for president in 2016, Brian Balak was the chair of the finance, the fundraising committee for the state of Florida. That's Brian Balak. So when Trump became president, obviously his favorite lobbyist became the most powerful lobbyist in DC. So I think we'll say about that. Trump hired Brian Balak and paid Brian Balak $90,000 a month, signed a nine-month, a six-month agreement with Brian Balak. $90,000 a month times six months. He hired two other lobbyists, but Brian Balak was a leading lobbyist. You know what I bought there? Brian Balak went to the Trump administration. Hey, 
interim not MMA, he told us, look, Atiku is running for president of Nigeria. Nigeria is, this This is the angle now. This is a selling point. Every lobbyist has to have a story. They got to have a pitch. Why should America change their focus or their position on Atiku? This is why. Brian Bollock and the other lobbyists did not tell Trump and his officials or the State Department officials that Atiku has changed, the man had clean man, he did, he died. No, no, no. That's not the argument they made. The argument they made was Atiku is running for president of Nigeria. He has a good shot of winning. Nigeria is Africa's largest economy. It's Africa's, has Africa's most powerful military. Nigeria is Africa's largest producer of oil. So you don't want this guy to become president of Nigeria and you don't have a good, a good, a good relationship with him. So what we can do, let's suspend the travel restriction on him, let him come to America, arrange for him to meet the Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, and he can meet some, Congress, some congressmen and members of the Nigerian diaspora community. That's a selling point. And on top of that, he will book a certain number of hotel rooms. He will bring a large entourage. <laughs> look, Washington DC. You know, someone look at all opposition men and they say they play in politics. Look at the men look at the guy look at the guy about plenty here to Look, they say he will also book a lot a number of rooms in Trump International Hotel in Washington, DC. That oh a tiku book, I think about 30 rooms for I don't know how long. That, and that's for money. So this is how Trump makes his own money too. All the big people who want to come see Trump, you want to come lobby Trump, they will tell you book rooms in Trump's hotel. Trump will find out uh, where, where he's just staying. Oh, at the hotel. Oh, that, that's very good. It's a very nice establishment. Great. I'm, I'm sure they're having fun. This is what they do. So Atiku booked a number of rooms, a good number of rooms at the Trump International Hotel. Pay cash. Everything. Man, wire the money. Pay everything. Atiku came to America for the first time in almost 10 freaking years. Guess what? Came to America. He met the guy. Huh? He met the guy. He met uh, the Assistant Secretary of State. I don't know whether it's a woman or a guy. And met with uh, some Congress people and met with the Nigerian, uh, some key members of the Nigerian diaspora. And then they did a huge publication back in Nigeria. That Atiku can now go to America. It's a big deal. So don't mess with Uncle Sam. Even a guy as rich as Atiku from a country as powerful as Nigeria huh? it is concerned about how America sees him. About whether he can come to America. Yeah. So so, so you, you have to understand geopolitics, the dynamics of geopolitics. Somebody just posted a guy in there. Yeah, he's the partner of uh, Brian Partners. Brian Ballard. Thank you. Brian Ballard, Brian D. Ballard. That is the guy they call Trump's lobbyist. He's currently the most powerful lobbyist in DC. You get Brian Ballard, you want to put George Weah on sanctions? You want Trump to do the tweet on George Weah and said, George Weah is an idiot, president of a shithole country? Brian Ballard can make Trump do a, a tweet. Just a tweet, a couple of tweets on George Weah. The next thing you know, they will put Jefferson Koji, McGill, Twelve, all of them on visa restrictions. Mike Pompeo, you will call Mike Mike. That those idiots from that shit whole country, put them on sanctions. Brian Ballard can make that happen. But you gotta pay him good. Pay him damn well. And he will make it happen. So Uncle Sam should not, cannot, must not be messed with. COP all the way. We will operate within the confines of the law. We will be peaceful. But guess what? If you beat us, you attack us, you get to pay the consequences. Uncle Sam will make sure you get to pay the consequences. We have access to congressmen, influential people here. We will let them know. We're in touch with them. We will let them know. Besides, Uncle Sam, as the government, is watching. And so now you, you, you are walking on thin ice. You got to be careful because if, if it cracks, you, you're going to fall through. You're going to fall through. Be very careful. God bless you all. Have yourselves a wonderful, blessed evening. November 16th, save the date. All of you are COP people. This is a mandate from the chairman. The flyer is up there.
Go and post it everywhere. Do the publicity. We rely on you to do that. Our Secretary General and his team will be going from radio station to radio station into the communities to do mobilization for the protest. This November 16 protest will be larger, will be more impactful than the June 7th and the January 6th. God bless you and save the state.